Our feet can give the Lord a round clap of praise. Amen. God says, wherever two or three are gathered in my name, that there will I be also. And since you came here, that means you came here today to get your praise on. Amen. Glory, glory. Hallelujah. Bless his name. Dear Heavenly Father, Lord God Almighty, again, Lord, we come to you with a spirit of thanksgiving. Just thanking you, Father God, for just being able to wake up this morning and see the dawning of a new day. And so, Father God, in the name of Jesus, we know that you're already in this place. And so, Father God, we ask that your Holy Spirit, your holy anointing, and your holy presence will just fill this place from the back to the front, Father God. Move in a way, Father God, that we know that we have been in your presence. And so now, Father God, in the name of Jesus, we place this time of worship into your hands that your all wise and your perfect will may be done. In Jesus' name we do pray. Let the church say amen. Amen, amen, amen. amen. We invite you to continue to stand and sing along as our choir leads us in a period of praise and worship. Amen. I don't know how many songs they're going to do, two or three, but whenever they do, we're going to sing along.
blessing, man. Glory to God. Amen. You may be seated in the presence of our Lord. Amen. Amen. Glory to God. Bless his name. Again, we're so glad that you decided to come out and join us for worship today. There are many that are watching us online, and we want to welcome them also. We pray God's blessings over you wherever you are. Amen. And however you're receiving this worship experience today. Amen. Amen. Again, just uh, very quickly, um, at, on the back table, we do have all of our announcements as they are printed. I certainly want to highlight a few that uh, certainly have been impacted by this recent um, outbreak of the coronavirus. Again, the senior ministry uh, trip, uh, please, if you uh, were a part of that, that has been canceled. So please contact Florence Bonaparte or Carolyn Rogers. Uh, men's ministry, we're having a meeting today after church, but that also has been canceled. Please be on the lookout for more information as to that meeting. Uh, if you had an article that you're trying to get in for the tithe, again, that is still due today. You can email it to uh, the tithe at msbc at aol.com or give it to one of the members of the tithe committee. Uh, the male chorus, they were going to be in concert today over at Rush Metropolitan. Uh, that concert for today has been canceled, so please uh, be mindful that the concert has been canceled. This upcoming Thursday, the senior movie matinee, Thursday movie matinee, that has also been canceled for our senior ministry. So please, again, uh, just be mindful of all of these things. Uh, let's be mindful that school has been called out. So these are going to be some very turbulent times for everyone. Uh, more information will be coming out as to activities here at Martin Street Baptist Church. So please uh, make sure to check your email on tomorrow morning so that you can get all of the announcements. Um, and here today, again, uh, during the worship service, we will not uh, stop and observe a formal offertory period. If you wish to give an offering today, uh, there's an offering place in the back. We ask that you would be so kind and gracious to place your offering in the place at any time throughout the worship service or as you exit the building. If you're watching us online and wish to contribute, you can certainly do that by going to our website and contributing in our donations page or through the cash app at uh, dollar sign MSBC donations, um, however the Lord has led you. Also back there on the back, we do have the instructions for our modified Daniel fast. Those of us who are members of Martin Street Baptist Church know that we have called the church to a period of uh, fasting and prayer starting on March the 22nd with 21 days going into Easter. And so the instructions on what we can have and cannot have they're also back on the back table. Please grab one, uh, or you can contact the church office and they can have that email out to you. Again, during these times, we just pray that everyone uh, would be safe. Uh, do all that you can do to try to minimize your exposure. Uh, but most of all, remember what God said in his word, that if we want healing, uh, then we need to pray. Amen? Amen. 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 And so again, we thank everybody for joining us. Uh, as you look unto the Lord in prayer, I mean, in scripture, uh, our scripture reading that we're going to lift up today will be 2 Chronicles chapter 7, verses 14, verse 14. 2 Chronicles 7 and 14. And I'll be reading from the King James Version of the Holy Text. Those of you that are able to stand for the reading of God's Holy Word, we invite you to please stand wherever you are. 2 Chronicles chapter 7, verse 14. From the King James Version, you will find these words written. It says, If my people, which are called by my name, shall humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways, then will I hear from heaven and will forgive their sins and will heal their land. God's word for God's people. It is blessed and made out a blessing to us all. You may be seated in the presence of our Lord. Amen. Let us look down unto the Lord in prayer. Our Father, Lord God Almighty, again, Father God, it's just a few of your humble servants gathered here in the need of prayer. Father God, we come to you first of all with the spirit of thanksgiving. Father God, we come thanking you because you have been better to us than we have been to ourselves. Even if we had a thousand tongues, Father God, we could not thank you for all that you have done for us. And so rather than trying to tell it all, Father God, we're going to thank you for it all. 
We're going to thank you for the many blessings that you've already sent our way, the ones that are seen as well as unseen, the ones that nobody else knows about, Father God. We're going to thank you from where you have brought us from to where you have brought us to, realizing that we could not have made it and we would not have made it if we did not have you on our side. So, Father God, in the name of Jesus, again, before we ask of anything, we plead the blood of Jesus, Father God, over our lives. Lord God, we ask for forgiveness of sin. Lord, we ask that you would look beyond our many faults and simply see our needs. We ask, Father God, that you would do what you said that you would do and you would supply our every need according to your riches and glory. And so, Father God, in the name of Jesus, we also ask now that you would allow us to intercede on behalf of the sick and the shut-in, Father God. Well, Lord God, we know that there's some among us that would like to be here, but the body would not allow them to be here. So, Father God, we call on you right now because we know you as a healer. Oh, Father God, we know that you have more healing in the hymns of your gods than in all the hospitals in this land. And so right now, Father God, in the name of Jesus, we ask for healing all over this land. We ask, Father God, that you would just send your Holy Spirit, Father God, to cover us, Father God. Protect us, Father God, during these very turbulent times. And then, Father God, for those that have been exposed to this, this virus, Father God, we pray, Father God, that you would go where no medicine can go and do what no doctor can do, and that is heal our bodies. Oh, Father God, in the name of Jesus, we pray for those uh, that, that, are, that are most at risk, Father God, our elderly, Father God. We pray for those that have been compromised and sick, Father God. We just pray, Father God, that you would just continue to be there for us during our time of need. We also pray, Father God, for the bereaved and brokenhearted during this time. For well, Father God, some have had to say their final goodbyes. But Father God, you said in your word that earth has no song, that heaven cannot heal. So Father God, in the name of Jesus, we just place all of your people into your hands, that your all wise and your perfect will may be done. And then Father God, we pray for this worship experience here today, Father God. Father God, we pray that as your word goes forth, Father God, that your word will fall on fresh and fertile ground in the hearts and minds of these, your precious people. We pray, Father God, wherever your people are gathered today, Father God, that you will be there in the midst of them, Father God. And then, Father God, we pray for these United States of America. We pray, Father God, for the elected leaders that you have appointed over us. We pray, Father God, that you would order their steps in your word. We pray, Lord, that you would remind them that we are your children, Father God, and that anything that they're doing unto us, Lord, they're doing it unto you. And so, Lord God, in the name of Jesus, now we just lift up all of these prayer requests and supplications. We lift up all of these people to you now, Father God, and we ask, Father God, that you will once again bless us in ways that only you can. And so, Father God, in the name of Jesus, now we submit all these prayer requests and supplications in the mighty, the marvelous, in the matchless name of your Son, our Savior, Jesus the Christ, our Lord. And let the church say, Amen.
God's holy word. Many of you that have been here over these last couple of years know that there are times when I take a long road home and then there are times when I tell you all that, you know what, I'm just going to cut on across the field. <laughs> I, I made up in my mind that we weren't going to be here long today. The choir has done their part. Now it's time for me to do mine. Amen. 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 And so, my message today, this very familiar text, and again, it's only one, one verse you don't have to stand. I just want to read it in here. Very, just one verse in 2 Timothy chapter 1, verse 7. 2 Timothy chapter 1, verse 7. In the King James Version, it reads, For God hath not given us the spirit of fear, but of power and of love, and of a sound mind. God has not given his people the spirit of fear. Amen. Instead, God has given us power and he's given us love and he has given us a sound mind. And so, Father God, in the name of Jesus, we pray your blessings now over this word, Father God, that you have prepared for us. We pray, Father God, that as this word go forth, Father God, you, Father God, will have your way, Father God. You said that your word will not return to your void, but it shall accomplish your will. And so, Father God, whatever it is that you want to do, Father God, we just say, have thy own way. And then, Father God, your man servant, I pray now that you would hide me behind the cross that only you might be saved. I pray that you would speak to my mind and speak through these lips of clay that I might give your word as you have given it unto me. And then, as always, Father God, I ask for preaching power, Kind of power that makes preaching easy. Lord, as always, thank your son Jesus Christ, and our Lord and Savior, in his holy and his precious name. And let the church say, Amen. 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 This is one of those times, church, when I really couldn't decide what the tag is I wanted to put on this text. The first title that I gave you was, Don't Be So Fearful. Then it was, You Have Nothing to Fear. But after I kept going over the message and going over it and over it, God laid it in my spirit to put a tag on this text that says, you have nothing to fear but fear itself. Amen. And the reason is because it's only three months into this new year. That's all we are, three months. The world has been set ablaze once again with fear. The question that many of us have to ask ourselves now is, am I going to let this happen to me again? See, because many of you may not have thought about it, but this, this ain't nothing new about the world is coming to an end. Just, just, just go back with me over this century. In 2000, they told us to watch out for the Y2K. It's going to kill us all. 2001, it was the anthrax. 2002, it was the West Nile disease. Then 2003, it was SARS disease. Then in 2005, it was the bird flu. In 2006, it was E. coli. In 2008, it was the financial crisis. It's going to kill us all. 2009, it was the swine flu. And then 2012, it the Mayan calendar had predicted that it was going to be the end of the world. 2013, they told us that, that no rocket man in North Korea, he had some rockets and he was going to kill us all. 2013, it was Ebola. 2015, it was a little group called ISIS. 2016, it was the Zika virus. And 2008, it was MERS. And now, in 2020, Watch out, watch out, everybody. Coronavirus is going to kill us all. Well, I'm here to tell you, church, I'm no scientist, I'm no epidemiologist, I'm no virologist. I don't know much about the coronavirus. I know about as much about the coronavirus as I know about coronavirus. The only thing I know about coronavirus is I heard that it goes good with life. I don't know about it. I'm not standing up here trying to tell you what the virus is going to do and how the virus works and what's going on. I don't know all that, but, but here's what I do know. 
Here's what I do know as a man of God. Despite what the world has said, despite how bad they said it's going to be, none of those things has killed us yet. That, that, that's where we got to go. We got to go back. Sometimes you got to look back at the last time something was supposed to kill us all. I'm not saying what's going to happen, but, but the truth of the matter is, so many of us, and when I say us, I'm not talking about everybody else, but I'm talking about those of us who call ourselves God's children. So many of us that believe in Jesus Christ, believe in his word, believe in the power of the blood. So many of us act like that just because they say it on the news, it must be true. Come on, somebody. So they, they act like just because they declare a state of emergency, it is a state of emergency. I know CNN like to say they're the most trusted name in news. But I come to let you know that there's another name that I trust even more than that. And this name is above all names. And that name, I've heard that every knee shall bow, that every tongue shall confess that he is Lord. Every now and then, you, you got to hear what the president has to say. Hear what the governor has to say. Hear what the scientists got to say. Hear what the epidemiologists got to say. And then you got to do like Hezekiah. And you got to go and see what God has to say about it. Yes. The message that God has for all of us in here today is you have nothing to fear except fear itself. Because the truth of the matter is that the, these diseases are not killing us, but fear is the thing that's really killing us. You see, the reason that God sent this message today, church, to all of us is because God wants us to know that if you're scared and if you're fearful, don't blame it on God. Because as God said in his word, he has not given us a spirit of fear. And the reason God has not given us a spirit of fear is because God wants us to live a life of faith. And God realizes that faith and fear can't occupy the same heart. Because where there's there is no faith. And where there's faith, there can't be no fear. So again, if you're scared, that, 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 you didn't get that from God. So here in our text today, Paul is writing this, this, this letter to his young protege, Timothy. Paul is writing to Timothy Church to encourage his heart. Because if there was anybody that needed encouragement, it was Timothy. You see, Timothy was fighting battles on every side because he was fighting battles in the church and out of the church. He was fighting battles with believers and non-believers. And Paul was trying to encourage young Timothy because Paul knew when you stand, you won't do what needs to be done. You won't say what needs to be said. And Paul knew the one thing Timothy needed to do was preach the word. Paul knew that if Timothy, Timothy had a spirit of fear, he wouldn't preach the word the way that it needed to be preached. So in order to encourage Timothy's faith, Paul starts again by telling Timothy what God has not given him. Paul is saying, listen, Timothy, God did not give you a spirit of fear. After Paul tells him what God has not given him, he did tell him, but here's what God has given you to combat your fear. Good news today, church, is the same way God helped Timothy. God will help all of us if you're fearful in life. So if you allow me to tip those to the students of the text, I believe that Paul is teaching us that if you want to combat your fears, the, the first thing you're going to need is dynamic power. Not just any power, but dynamic power. That dunamis power that can only come from God. If you can, you've you got to see the picture in the text. You can't see it in the King James Version. You ought to read this in the NIV Version. Because in the NIV Version, what Paul says to Timothy is, the spirit that God has given you does not make you timid, but instead, it gives you power. I don't know about anybody else, but I like that right there. I like the way that sounds. You ought to say it every now and then. I got the power. The reason I like the church is it helps me to remember that I don't have to rely on my own strength, my own might, or my own sword, or my own education. But when I'm going through what I'm going through, not only do I have some help, but I got the power. And not only do I have the power, church, but I got the same power that created the heavens and the earth. I got the same power that created something out of nothing. I got the same power that created every and the one that owns the power, he told me that he would never leave me, 
nor forsake me. He told me that he would protect me from all hurt, harm, and danger. And he told me that I have nothing to fear except fear itself. Come on, somebody. So I don't know what the virus is going to do. I don't know what the next virus is going to do. But what I do know is if I have the power to make it then, then I got the power to make it now. You got the power. Stop relying on somebody else to do what you got the power to do. But the, the second thing that Timothy, uh, that Paul tells us that we need is if you want to call that fear, not only do you need dynamic power, but he says you're going to need divine love. You're going to need the love of God. Church, when I think about all the things that God has given us in our arsenal to combat fear, the one thing that, that holds it all together is God's love. You see, because without God's love, all of us would have been dead and gone because my Bible says that the wages of sin is death. But it's the gift of God. Come on, it's the gift of God that allows you to wake up this morning. It's the gift of God that allows you to come to church this morning because the gift of God, which is his love, is eternal life. Come on, it was God's love, church, that caused him to create us. And it was God's love that caused him to save us. And it's the unmerited, the undeserving love of God that keeps him watching out for us. And when you know the one that is sitting high and is looking low. When you know that he's the one that's watching out for you, you know that you have nothing to fear but fear itself. Because when your enemies come upon you, he will make sure that they stumble and fall. See, when you're a child of God, you got to live with the confidence of knowing that God loves you too much to either sleep nor slumber. God loves you too much to take his eyes off of you. So with every breath you take and every move you make, God is watching out for you. you got to be able to look at your enemies. Y'all heard me say this before. you got to be able to look at your enemies and the virus and you got to let them know you, it may look like I'm by myself, but I'm surrounded by angels. i got help all around me. You just can't see them. And the way God looks out for his children is by making sure that grace and mercy are always on our side. You see, God's grace and mercy, church, are always preceded by his divine love. Because see, when you're a child of God, here's how God speaks to you. God says, hear me now, my child. Look, I'm going to give you some stuff that you don't deserve, that you didn't work for, and you did not earn. And the reason I'm going to give it to you is not because of you, but I'm going to give it to you because I love you so much. That's why God blesses us. It ain't because you're so smart. It ain't because you've been to college. It ain't because you're so educated. God blesses you because he loves you. But at the same time, when God talks to his children, he also gives us the other side of the coin. And God tells his children, look, now in this life, all of us are going to have to go through something. But because you're my child, I'm going to limit the harm, I'm going to limit the hurt, and I'm going to make sure that whatever you're going through can't have his way with you. That's what we ought to be glad about. That the enemy... That, that there's some things he might be able to do to you, but he can't have his way with you. The, the enemy might be able to touch your money, touch your family, touch, touch your, your business, but the one thing the enemy cannot do is touch inside of you. Amen. God says, I'm going to limit what you got to go through. And it's not because of you, not because you've been so good, not because you've done it all right, not because you died every eye and crossed every T. No, he said, I'm going to do it simply because I love you. That's why we ought to thank God for his divine love. Thank God that he don't love us the way that we love one another. Thank God that he don't get mad at us and not answer our call and don't respond to us because we've done something wrong. God said, I'll look beyond your many faults. And I simply see a need. But as we cut across the field and take this thing on home, you sure you're going to need dynamic power. Yes, you're going to need divine love, but you're also going to need a disciplined mind. You've got to learn, church, how to discipline your mind. Because here again, when we read this in the King James Version, the King James Version ends verse 7 with this, the phrase of a sound mind. But in the Greek, the word really refers to 
through a disciplined or self-controlled mind. And if anything I don't want you to underestimate today, church, it's the power of your own mind. Because I'm sure you've heard it said before that you may not be whatever you think you are, but whatever you think, that's what you are. Because as James Allen once said, as a man thinketh, so is he. See, those of us that spend a little time in the military, we can tell you firsthand how important psychological warfare is. It's a thing that they call psyops. Because see, in the military, one thing that they understand is if you ever want to win the battle on the battlefield, you've got to first win the battle in your mind. Somebody needs to hear me right now because so many of us are losing the battle before the battle ever gets started. Because at the first sign of trouble, we think it's over. Come on. Soon as the news say it's over, we think it's over. Soon as the news tell us to panic, we start to panic. As soon as the news say that it's going to kill us all, we think it's going to kill us all. But somebody got to know that the devil is a liar because it ain't over. Your God says it's over. In your own life, you got to remember this. you got to say this to yourself. That it's not over until I think it's over. If you don't want to think that it's over, you got to be like a little train that was going up the hill. And you got to have an attitude that says, I think I can. I think I can. See, because we've all heard it before. If you don't believe it, you'll never achieve it. As I get ready to take my seat, I want to say this to those that are here, those that may be watching online. Yes! In these times, we need to be smart. Yes, we need to be careful. Yes, we need to be cautious. But we also need to know who's in control. We've got to know that nothing is going to happen to us unless God allows it to happen to us. Since God knows about all our troubles, I don't know about you, but God knows about every trouble that I got because I take them all to God in prayer. Yes, I'm, I'm going to think positive. I'm going to choose to trust and believe in God. I'm going to choose to keep the faith. But not only am I going to keep the faith, church, but I'm going to, I'm going to walk by faith and not by sight. I'm not going to let the world tell me what I ought to believe. I'm going to keep leaning on the everlasting arm, and I'm going to keep my hand in the Lord's hands. Oh, yes. Why? Because Jesus knows what it's like to have to go through something. Because my Bible said that he went through being lied on. He went through he went through the pain of the cross. He went through being put down in a broad tomb. He went through being there on Friday and all day Saturday. And praise be to God. He was able to get up with yes. all power in his hands. I don't know about any of y'all, but I believe that this too shall pass. Yes. And we're going to be able to get back up. Because yes. God was able to get back up. Amen. And so while we're going through, the thing that we ought to be saying to ourselves is we have nothing to fear. Nothing to fear. Except fear itself. And the reason we ought to fear fear, because God said in his word, I have not given you a spirit of fear. So if you got it, you got it from somebody else. <laughs> Amen. Amen. I don't know. Uh, one of my favorite sayings is they just practice in medicine. Yes. <laughs> they, they, they just practice in medicine. Yeah. There's some scientists and doctors in the lab right now practicing on a vaccine. That's it. They, 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 try, they do trial and error trying to figure it out. But you got to know that God not only has all power, but God knows all things. And so, don't let folks who practice it convince you that they know what, what the deal is. Sometimes you got to go to God and get a second opinion. Amen. When God tells you that it's going to be all right, you got to say, I know everything is going to be all right. Come on, let us bless the Lord. Hallelujah. Bless his name. Again, I think I did what I said I was going to do. Yeah, we're going to be out of here in less than an hour, like I said.
Praise the Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. Don't take all day to worship God. Amen. You can worship him all week. This is just a, another thing to do. Let's come together and worship him in corporate worship. And so everything that's been said and done here today, we're not going to leave without the doors of God's church. Maybe somebody here in this sanctuary, or maybe somebody watching online who has heard this word, and in these turbulent times, they decided that they want to give Jesus a try. But the psalmist said, oh, taste and see that the Lord is good. If you want to give God a try and taste him for yourself, we want to invite you to come. We want to invite you to come that we might pray with you and pray for you that you can have the blessed assurance of knowing that you are saved. You would like to be saved. You would like to be baptized. Jesus says, whosoever will, just let him come. The second invitation we extend is for anybody who has heard this word. You have said in your heart that it's time for you to come back home. Coming back home does not necessarily mean to the physical building of the church, but to a right relationship with Jesus Christ. So many of us grew up in the church, and then we kind of strayed away from that path of righteousness. God is standing and waiting with open arms saying, why don't you come back home? So if you're here today or you're listening today and you want to come back home, Jesus is standing and waiting with open arms saying, whosoever will, just let him come. The final invitation we extend is for anybody in need of a church home. You're in need of a church home and you desire to be a, a member of Martin Street Baptist Church 1001 East Martin Street, Raleigh, North Carolina. Again, we stand waiting with open arms to welcome you in, that you might be a part of the body of Christ. If you're watching from someplace else that is not local to Raleigh, again, contact us so that we might put you in contact with a local body of believers so that you might be under the covering of the blood. Again, God said that his word would not return to him void, so his doors are open wide so that all his children might come inside. If there one here today, it says, yes, Lord, here I am, in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Bless his name. Amen. Come on, let us bless the Lord for what he's done. Glory to God. Amen. We've done what we said we were going to do. We've done what the Lord has called us to do. We come and we worship him in the beauty of holiness. Now as we get ready to leave this place again, we pray that each of you had a blessed time in the Lord. Amen. Wherever you are. Glad that you came. Please be on the lookout. We'll do all we can to disseminate information as decisions are made as to what we're going to do about activities here at the church as well as next week. No decision has been made, but we will get the information out as soon as possible. Again, we thank you. We love you and we pray God blessing over you and for those of you that may be watching online. We thank you for joining us wherever you are. And we pray that these blessings have come into your presence as well. Amen? Amen. 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 So let us stand as we get ready to leave. Remember, if you did not get it, one of the announcement sheets there on the table, the instructions for the modified Daniel fast are on the table. If you would like to make a contribution on the way out, there's an offering plate on the table as well. Again, we thank you. We pray God for you. And may heaven continue to smile upon you. Let us look unto the Lord in prayer. Our Father and our God, again, we thank you and we praise you, Lord, for just being able to be here today and come and call on your holy and your righteous name. Father God, we know that we're only here today because of your grace and your everlasting mercy. And so, Father God, in the name of Jesus now, we get ready to leave this place, but never for your presence. We do pray, Lord, that you would go with us and that you would lead, guide, and direct us along the way. And Father God, we'll be ever so careful to continue to give you honor, to give you praise, and to give you glory, because Lord, you deserve that, no so much more. And now unto him, who is able to keep us all from falling, and to present us faultless before the presence of his glory, with exceedingly static overwhelming joy, to the only wise God, our Savior, be dominion and powerful, glory and majesty, this day, henceforth, and forevermore. And let the church sing together.